As promised tonight, we're going to be talking about annuities, which is the bulk of the grade 12 stuff. It's a really important section, but it needn't be very difficult if you understand what an annuity is. So I've done a bit of preparation for tonight and I've put some stuff on the board. So if we have a look there, what I've said to you is an annuity is a set of fixed payments which form an investment, which is either going to be a future value investment or repay a loan, which is a present value. Now, I just want to stress something for all the viewers at home. When we're talking about this annuity, we're talking about the same amount at the same frequency all the time. So if you're going to pay monthly 100 Rand, you've got to pay 100 Rand every single month for it to be an annuity. But if you pay 200 Rand, then 700 Rand, then 900 Rand, that's not an annuity. So I just remind you, an annuity is when you're paying a fixed amount at a regular same interval all the time. And so what we do is we look at the two different types of annuity formulas. And so we have a, a future value annuity. Let's not go too far. And we have a present value annuity. Now what I want you to have a look at over here, if we look at our screen, is that X is my payment amount. Okay, if I can just get my pen over here. This is my payment or my installment amount. I is the interest rate and that has never ever changed. N is the number of payments. So that's quite important. N is the number of payments. Okay, and I, we, we've spoken about already, is the interest rate per period. Now I just want to make a few things clear here. Because quite often, it's very easy to say a future value is when you're saving. And a present value, which we'll get to now, is when you have a loan, you're paying off a loan. But the questions become quite tricky. So I want you to try and have this visualization at home. If we're starting off with zero, and we're growing to some amount in the future, so we start off with nothing and grow to some amount in the future, I always say that this is a future value. So it takes us from nothing and grows up to something. Quite an important concept and there's a reason why I show it like that. Let's now look at the present value. Okay, And so the other annuity formula that we have is a present value annuity formula. And again, X is always your installment amount. That is the amount that you're going to be paying every month or you're going to be paying every quarter, or you might be paying every year. But it's the same amount that you keep paying at the same payment frequency. Very important to remember that. N is the number of payments. I, of course, is the interest rate per period. But look at the difference in this formula. It's almost like things have been changed around a little bit. The lovely thing for you at home is that you don't have to remember the formulas. The formulas are given to you on the metric formula sheet. My advice is when you're practicing examples, Print it or get your teacher to give you those formulas so you continue to work from them so that you become more familiar with them. Very important. Now, let's just talk about the subtleties here of a present value. So, what I say is when you've got a present value annuity, generally speaking, people say that the present value is for a loan. And they're quite right. Present value is for a loan. But what I say is you are taking some value down to zero in the future. So a present value always takes something down to zero. A future value takes something up to zero. And that's important. And in one of my last questions, if we have enough time, I'm going to show you a real nasty, tricky, ricky where we're dealing with a lotto. Wouldn't we all like to win it? And we'll see how we can use a lotto winning and use one of these annuity formulas. So hang on for that. All right. In the end, I'm going to go to my first question, all right, which I've prepared. Exciting. I'm just going to move on there. And we've got an example up on screen. So I want you to have a look. And I'm not just doing the basics at home, okay? So tonight, through the four or five examples that I've got, I'm trying to teach you things that you must look out for when you're doing these questions. Okay. Veronica deposits a thousand rand into a savings account at the end of each month for a period of five years. Very, very important. We know that we are depositing the same amount all the time. And it is for the same period and it's important for you to know that we're talking monthly. So straight away, I know I've got an annuity. It's a regular payment, same amount, same frequency. But there's a trick here. For the first two years, the rate is 10% per annum compounded monthly. So we know it's a monthly rate. And for the remaining three years, the rate changes to 13% per annum compounded monthly. How much does the investment realize? Whew. Before you panic and phone a mechanic at home, what we're going to do is we're going to unravel it very slowly. So I'm just going to do one little step at a time. 
But the first thing you've got to say to yourself, is this a future value or is this a present value? Am I saving for money going into the future or am I paying off a loan and bringing it down to zero? And I think it's pretty clear we're going to deal with a future value annuity. Okay, so I'm now going to work over here and I'm going to start with my solution. So, future value annuity is equal to x, then I'm going to put in my bracket, it's going to be 1 plus r to the power of n minus 1, and that is all over the interest. Now, let's get the information that I need. x is my monthly installment, and x is 1,000 rand. I'm going to lose my information, so I've just got to go back up the interest rate, and now we've got to be very careful, because for all of you at home, you're probably thinking, what's going on here? I've got two different interest rates. And so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to snip this annuity and I'm going to have to divide my question into two different parts. So I'm going to work with my timeline and I'm going to work for the first two years. You see, when we deal with an annuity, you can never tamper with it. As soon as you tamper with it by changing a payment amount, by changing the interest rate or doing anything to it, you have to stop your annuity. So your annuity is like this black box where it's fixed. So I'm going to work with my annuity for the first two years and thereafter, after two years, something changes. So I'm going to have to stop my annuity. And I want you to see, I, I'm sure most of you at home could do the annuity for two years, but then you say, what do I do with it? And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to stop the annuity and see how we grow and work with the second part. So the interest rate is 10% per annum compounded monthly. Remember, 10% is 0, 0,10. That's 10 hundreds. You don't need to put the zero. And that is being done monthly, so it is over 12. So I've got the interest rate, uh, and the duration is two years. But please remember that N stands for the number of payments. So in two years, if you're paying monthly, it would be two lots of 12 payments, and that's going to be 24. So I'm going to, whoops, we seem to have a problem with our pen. She's coming apart at the seams. Okay, so we're going to have 24 payments. So now I'm going to put this into my calculator. Or I'm going to put it into my formula sheet over here. X is 1,000. Um, 1 plus. And the interest rate over there is going to be 0, 0,1 over 12. And I don't need to simplify because the calculator worked that out for me. 0, 0,1 over 12. That there is to the power of 24 minus 1 and that is all over i which is 0 comma 1 to the power of 12 again oh. so i can go and work that out and i'm going to put it on a calculator but i'm going to show you a very clever trick because i actually don't need that answer just yet let's put on our calculator let's see what happens but I, I don't really need it at this stage. So I'm going to press 1000. The beauty of this calculator is that you can type it exactly as you see it. So I'm going to press my brackets. But now I want to see my fraction. So press your fraction button. And at the top there's another set of brackets. So again, press your brackets. And what have I got? 1 plus another fraction, 0 0.1. And that's all over 12. And that there is to the power of 24. So press your power button, 24. Let's scroll down. Let's subtract 1. And let's scroll right down to the bottom where I need another fraction. Because that now is 0 0.1 over 12. All over 12. And then I'm going to just scroll out, close my brackets, press equals, and I get my answer. And that is the total amount that Veronica would have had after the first two years. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to pause this question and I want to talk about the subtleties as to what is going on in terms of the changing interest rate and some of the tricky rickies here. Let's look at our timeline so that we understand a little bit about what's going on. Okay. Can you run out of virtual ink? I think I'm running no, out I'm of virtual running out of ink. <gasps> Is okay. it working? Uh, we're battling. Sometimes it doesn't like certain colors. Try another color. See, okay. see, strange. So now, what is going to happen is that I'm working 
from now up to the fifth year. And we know that after two years, okay, the interest rate changes. So I'm growing my annuity up to there at a certain interest rate. And then the interest rate is going to change for the last three years where I'm going to get a new interest rate. And the question is, how do we bring everything together so that we can make sense of all of this? I have calculated this first bit over here. Now, I want you to almost think as if you are going to a bank. If you have worked out this first amount and the interest rate changes, you have to stop your annuity. And it's almost like you now go put that money into the bank. And you're going to start your next annuity. But think about it. If you put your money into the bank, what's going to happen to it? It's going to grow with interest. But it's just compound. It's not an annuity anymore. So you get this full amount over here that we would have got. And that is going to grow with interest over here for the next three years. Whoopsie. Oh. <laughs> I'm really having fun tonight. Okay. So that's going to grow for the next three years at my different interest rate. And down below, I'm going to create a new annuity. And this new annuity is going to be at a new interest rate. And I think we said that that was 13%. And that is going to be for three years. So look very carefully, because now I'm going to put it all together. But I don't think I have a big enough screen. Let's see what happens. Just to extend a page down there. there oh my at word. The bottom. These yeah. things are massive. So they kind of yeah. like go right Forever across the ever. screen. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Okay. So I'm going to just break it down. So annuity one. The first part. I've got a thousand. I'm going to grow it. If I can try to remember all the different things. It was one plus the interest rate, which is 0, 0,1 over 12 to the power of 24 minus 1 and that was all to the power I mean interest rate 0, 0,1 over 12 that is the first two years look what I'm doing at the end now that's very important that will now go into the bank and it's going to sit in the bank for three years at the new interest rate and the new interest rate was 13 percent per annum compounded monthly so that is almost like the deposit amount this grows, okay, so it's 0 0.13 over 12 because it's a monthly rate, but for three years to the power of 36. Please understand that's only what your annuity, which you pay for two years, will be worth at the end of five years. But we have another three years worth of payments at a different rate. So now I'm going to press plus, okay, and now I'm going to press plus, and I know that I've still got a thousand. Okay, let's just extend my page a little bit. And this is going to then be 1 plus the new interest rate, 0, 0,13 over 12 to the power of 36 minus 1. And that is all over the R, 0, 0,13 over 12. And what I've got to do is I've got to add those two totals together. In case you're wondering, look at the interest rate there. So this annuity is for two years. For the next three years, the interest rate has changed because that was my other interest rate. Because after the second year, the interest rate changed to 13% per annum, compounded monthly. And we still continue. So this annuity is intact. For three years, nothing changes. It goes for the three years at that interest rate. So I hope that's making sense. It is a, a, a subtle question with a, a few little tricks in there. But if you can try and understand what happens when you stop or change a payment or the interest rate, you've got to stop that annuity. You put that annuity into the bank and grow it with interest. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my calculator. But the beauty of it all is I've already got the first answer. Okay. Well, I'm going to start from scratch. Why don't I just start from scratch? You have a look at home. Let's hope I can remember everything. So this is going to be a massive thing that I put in the calculator. 1,000. Open your brackets. Fraction. Open your bracket at the top. It's 1 plus fraction. 0 0.1 that's over 12 let's close the bracket and that's to the power of 24 that's my two years worth minus 1 then I'm going to scroll down to your bottom that will be 0 0.1 and that's all over 12 scroll out okay 
there. That would have been my annuity. Now what I'm doing is I was growing that for three years because it sits in the bank growing interest. So this is now just compounding. So it would have been that amount and now I do the compound formula. So it's 1 plus the interest rate, but the new interest rate is 0 0.13. That is over 12, so it's 13%, and that's monthly. And that there was to the power for three years, so if it's monthly, that's 36. That's the first part. Now I've got to add the second annuity. These are massive on the calculator. So then I'm going 1,000. Let's put it into this annuity formula. Let's put my fraction. Let's go and put up there so it's 1 plus 0 0.13. That is all over 12. Uh-oh. Okay, the calculator has run out of memory. Isn't this fun? So this is cool. I'm going to show you how I'm going to solve this because the calculator has run out of memory. So all of you at home, watch very, very carefully. I'm going to get the first part of my solution. So I'm going to press equals. Now it's going to put it on screen. But hopefully as matric students and you the big people, you can never round off to the final answer. So I'm going to store this in my calculator and I'm going to store this under A. And I don't know how big your calculators are, at, I mean your screens are at home, but there's a little A there. Oopsie. Let me just go back to where I was. Okay, press equals. Now I'm going to tell it to store it into A. So I press shift and there is the store, STO store. I pressed it twice, sorry. Let's go shift, store it into A. And you'll see it says that the answer has gone into A, which is nice. That's I'm very now, fancy. Yeah, if you ever want to call that back, all I do is I go recall, so I press and you'll see RCL, click A and it gives me that total unrounded. So now I'm going to go and do the second calculation of my annuity, which is that thousand there. So I've got one thousand. Open your brackets. Let's do this whole annuity story again. Open there. So it is going to be one plus zero point one three all over twelve because this thing was monthly. Scroll up. I'm really battling with this pen tonight. I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> this was for three years, so it's power of 36. Scroll down, 0 0.13, 0 0.13, and that's over 12. Let's go and close my annuity. Boom, and there's that answer. But we're not finished. Because it's the one annuity we've stored, this is a second annuity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this into B. So I'm going to say shift store into B. All right, and that's stored into B. So if I just show you now, if I scroll here, I have got that part I've stored into B. That top part I've stored into A. Try another colour. <laughs> if all else fails, try another colour. Okay. Patience is a virgin. Let's keep going. I've stored that into A. And so now what I can do is I can go and say, right, my final answer is I'm going to say, let's go and call up A. And let's go and call up B. So I'm adding those two together. And this over here now is my final, final answer. So what am I? 175,030 runs and 79 cents. So hopefully you can see that 175,030 rand and 79 cents. I'm going to leave that up on screen and then the viewers can see that. Perfect. I think we're going to take a pause there. It's a massive, massive formula and, and you've seen that sometimes it doesn't even fit on the calculator but you just need to understand the formulas and substitute in. There's not a huge amount of thinking once you've substituted into the formula and let the calculator do the rest for you.